بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد We praise Allah Ta'ala and we send salat and salam on the finest of his creation, the Messenger Muhammad. As for what follows, and this is the second sitting of our gatherings explaining the serious nature of the errors of Yusuf Estes. And this sitting has occurred Laylat al Nisf, the night of the 15th of Shahri Shawwal, the month of Shawwal, the year 1433 which corresponds to September 2nd, 2012. You will see, or you will hear in this audio, the statements of Yusuf Estes from his own mouth. And if you follow along with the PDF file, the free ebook, which is aimed at clarifying these mistakes and cleaning up the mess created by Yusuf Estes over the last decade, you can link, you can follow a link to the YouTube videos that are widely available and see the words being spoken by Yusuf Estes. And if you have any doubt about the context of the words, and perhaps we have just chosen selective statements and taken them out of context, you are absolutely free to research on your own to listen to what's before and after, to listen to the entire audio, although I personally advise you not to listen to Yusuf Estes. But you are free to go and learn about the correct context of his words, because there will be claims from his supporters, as there already have been claims, from the co-stars on Huda TV, those who are with his group, that Yusuf Estes did not mean what is being attributed to him and his words are being taken out of context and so on. Every type of fidgeting, wriggling, and trying to get around this issue will be taken by this hizb, by this group of people who watch each other's backs because they are all part of a central organization. Don't take your clarification of this issue from his best friends and his co-conspirators and his co-stars and those who may have reputations as students of knowledge and they may have accomplishments and they may have degrees but they are shoulder to shoulder with him and while I personally it has been brought to my attention that I have said that Yusuf Estes has made these errors over the past 10 years so why have you been silent why have you not advised us before this time as people are looking for any reason to attack this critic, to reject this clarification, to preserve the untouchable reputation of Yusuf Estes, totally impermissible in Islam, absolutely impermissible. People have asked me, why, am I, why have I remained silent for 10 years while this man goes on to teach, if it is correct that you have assumed or that you claim he has... Uh, been deviating and warping the Muslim aqidah for the past 10 years, why haven't you spoken? And the answer is I haven't spoken because I became aware of them about five, minute, five months ago and I began preparing a response since that time. And I apologize and I repent to Allah for delaying in publishing that response, but it was only to get the advice of my mashayikh, of the scholars of Islam and other students of knowledge many of them above my level, some of them on my level. May Allah Ta'ala bless them all for their input, their advice, their suggestions. And I hope that it was a delay that helped to make the article clear, obvious, academic, something that will help the Muslims, something that will clean up this nasty mess from these horrible teachings over the past decade. I say now, and you can follow along, in the PDF from the very beginning, from the basic beliefs of Islam, is a very simple concept 
that Sunni Muslims throughout all stages of Islamic history agreed upon and considered unchallengeable. Muslims believe in the Qur'an, that it is the speech of Allah the Almighty, be it recited orally, memorized by heart, or written in the mushafs. After reading this, after hearing this explanation, you should understand clearly how essential this belief is and how dangerous it is to oppose it. In what must be considered some of the most blameworthy examples of speaking about Allah without knowledge, Yusuf Estes, may Allah Ta'ala guide him, states clearly that what is written in the Mus'haf is not really the Qur'an. He believes that the real Qur'an is only that which is recited and memorized. According to him, the writing in the Mus'haf is a kind of representation of the Qur'an and not the Qur'an itself, which is stored away in a loh al-mahfuz, the preserved tablet, as he says, with Allah in paradise, as you will hear from his own mouth. He believes that the Qur'an written in the Mus'hafs is comparable to paper money, dollars. Worthless as paper itself, yet it represents something valuable stored in another place. He further likens the written Qur'an to the sheet music of Christian hymns. Let us begin to hear the exact words of Yusuf Estes. May Allah Ta'ala guide him. The first text will come from uh, a program on Huda TV. May Allah Ta'ala guide all of them and allow them to uh, correct and rectify these mistakes that were spread on their programs from a series called The Beauties of Islam. From their programs called The Beauties of Islam. This specific show was called The Beauties of the Quran or The Beauty of the Quran. And it's on YouTube as the part, the second part of that program. Now, at precisely one minute, or this is in part two, now at precisely one minute and fifty seconds, we will listen to what Yusuf Estes says. Pieces of paper and ink, as we mentioned in the previous program, a person could change this right here by just putting ink in there and changing it around or rip a page out. I hope they don't do that. It's not nice, but. It really doesn't change the Qur'an. It changes this book. It changes this Mus'haf. Yes, but you can't change the Qur'an. Why? Because, first of all, Allah tells us that the Qur'an is actually with Him, which means it's with Allah in the paradise. And nobody can touch it. None can touch this except the angels of Allah. Nobody can even approach it. So, there you have heard our first quote. You are free to use the PDF to find the link to the exact words of Yusuf Estes. Later, in this same video, in this same sitting, uh, he goes on uh, to explain with a, a bit more detail. And we'll be listening to the same video from about the 8 minutes mark. Let us listen. ...in our discussion. The Qur'an is not a piece of paper. It's not something that's written down. It is something that is memorized and recited. It means the recitation. Now, I want you to take a dollar bill or a denomination of the money that you have, wherever you are, take it and look at it. Look at the dollar bill. Now take a $10 bill or a $20 bill and look at them. They're both pieces of paper. They both have ink on them. But even though they could be the same size and weigh the same amount on a scale, one, we say, is worth many times more than the other. Why? Because of what it says on it. Actually, the paper isn't worth anything, is it? The paper is not. But what it represents, and what the money represents is gold or silver or something precious that's put up in storage somewhere else. And you don't touch that. That's not something that you play with. In fact, if you wanted to go see the gold at Fort Knox in the United States, well, I'm sure you'd have to make an appointment and get some clearance for that. But in the meantime, you could have all the paper that you wanted and pass it around to other people and they'll exchange it 
as though it was the actual gold, silver, diamonds, or whatever it is. So in this same way, we make the comparison that the Quran written on paper is similar to the money that we pass around every day. It means it has a value in and of itself because we respect it, we take care of it, and we don't deface currency because if we did, we'd get in trouble with the police. They would say, oh, you can't mark on those dollars. Okay, so now we have heard the second selection from the words of Yusuf Estes directly. We ask Allah Ta'ala to save the unsuspecting victims of Yusuf Estes from the kufr of these statements. We will go on. And as, you, as so you know, we will play the statements of Yusuf Estes one after the other. And that is the second sitting. Our second sitting in this series is comprised of his statements alone. At the end, I will mention a few statements of the imams. And then in our next sitting, we will discuss in detail the correct aqidah, how it opposes these horrible words of filth from this man, from words from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from, from the Book of Allah firstly, from the words of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and his companions and the tabi'een, the imams of Islam throughout history, and those who gathered their statements into the most authentic and most relied upon staple books of Aqidah. We will hear their statements of how the Imams viewed people who speak with these words and similar words. Now, the next statement of Yusuf Estes comes from another episode in the same series. And again, follow along in the PDF. All of these are transcribed and there are links to each and every one of them. So you don't have to have any doubt in what we are saying. And you don't have to listen to the foolish people defend him and say you're twisting his meanings. You can be upon bayina, you can be upon clarity in your religion. And you can seek asylum and refuge with Allah from the filth of a TV star who is leading the Muslims astray and doesn't want to correct himself and doesn't want to clarify the deen of Allah or perhaps is incapable of doing so. May Allah Ta'ala guide him. In the next statement, Yusuf Estes says in, uh, in a sitting or in a, 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 a program from the Beauties of Islam, uh, the specific program was called Preservation of Islamic Resources. And apparently it has four parts, and this is part number one. And we're going to look at the video or listen to the video from the uh, 6 minute and 35 second mark, insha'Allah ta'ala. And here we are. Sorry for the delay. Quran is not really meaning a book in the sense that this this book here, but rather the book that's with Allah. And when it's recited, it's considered Quran, that which is being recited. <clears throat> now here's the beautiful thing. Each and every Muslim on the planet is using... As we have heard his statement there, very clearly, saying that the Quran is not really meaning a book in the sense that it's this book here, and he pointed to a mushaf. He said, but rather the book that's with Allah. And when it's recited, it's considered Qur'an, that which is being recited. In a series called Lifting the Fog, our next quote comes from this series. It's called Lifting the Fog, also produced by Huda Television. May Allah Ta'ala guide those who work there. May Allah Ta'ala open the hearts of those who work the cameras and those who are technicians and those who work there and haven't realized the harm that they have been involved in. May Allah Ta'ala open their hearts and allow them to seek uh, their, their work somewhere else, where they do not harm the aqidah of the Muslims, where they are able to learn their religion properly from people who really have knowledge. May Allah Ta'ala give them a way out from the situation that they are in. There's a program called The Bible and the Quran from that series called Lifting the Fog, meaning correcting misconceptions. And Yusuf Estes is the most deserving of any Muslim to have the fog lifted from his thoughts and from his ideas. However, he's busy lifting the fog for others upon total ignorance. From the three minute mark, or three minutes and 15 seconds, we find the following statement. Not 
and a, a misconception. On is not a physical book that you hold in your hand. It's a recitation. The Quran can be in written form and then you have something that you can look at and use. But in this concept, it would be similar to your money. When you have a dollar bill, it doesn't really have a wealth. It represents the wealth that's somewhere else. Let me give you an example. A one pound note and a five pound note and a 10 pound note or a one dollar bill, a five dollar bill and a 10 dollar bill. They're not really money. They represent gold or silver or some type of wealth that's somewhere else. In the same way, the Qur'an, when we see something written down and we say, this is the Qur'an, we have to understand that that itself is not Qur'an, but represents the Qur'an. The Qur'an is in the book which is with Allah. And this really does... There you have heard more of the clear speech of Yusuf Estes from his own mouth. We will listen now to another statement he makes later in this same video. And you're free to connect these passages. Again, if you fall for the, uh, the games of those who are going to defend Yusuf Estes, you fall for their tricks, his co-TV stars, then go yourself, listen to this entire episode, and you will see that I'm only quoting the relevant passages, and I'm not leaving something out to hide anything, and you are free to investigate yourself. However, I don't want to play a 45-minute video one after the next for you. I want Mawli' al-Shahid. I want the point where the speech of the Qur'an is relevant. The speech about the Qur'an is said. In the same episode, uh, he later says, and we're taking now from the seven and a half minute mark of the same episode, we hear these words from Yusuf Estes. Editions of the dictionary, encyclopedia, all the time. Simply because of that. Let us now look to the word Quran one more time and realize that it is recitation. Allah promises to preserve the Quran or recitation until the last day. What does that mean? That means we should be able to hear it. Not necessarily read it or look at it as a book, but to be able to hear it. There you have heard. Yusuf Estes saying that Allah Ta'ala has preserved the Qur'an in that we hear it, not that it can be preserved or not that it is preserved as a book. In the same episode, even later, we find another grave error regarding Surah Al-Baqarah and he speaks with some unbefitting words that are not really the focus of what I'd like to talk about now, but the focus here is on the angle of proof that he uses. He makes tafsir of the Book of Allah. He is unqualified to explain any verse from the Qur'an. He is not a person qualified to make tafsir. And he has spoken with tafsir of the opening verses of Surah Al-Baqarah with what he has no salaf for in an attempt to prove the legitimacy of his deviant beliefs that the Qur'an is the book with Allah in Lawh al-Mahfud. And this is the belief of the Lavdiya sect as we have discussed already. The Qur'an is only that which is found in the Lawh al-Mahfud. And it is not what is in the Mus'hafs, the belief of men, of who? The Lavdiya sect of the Jahmiya. To justify this, he has come up with an argument that the Jahmiya have never used, meaning he's inventing new arguments to support an ancient form of deviance. This is where we say, he's not only just blindly following an old innovation, rather he is supporting it, developing it, bringing new angles to champion it. Pay attention and listen to the words from the mouth of Yusuf Estes himself. And this is from the 14-minute uh, mark and 20 seconds from the same clip or from the same uh, video. It starts out in the beginning of Surah Baqarah. Baqarah is the, fir uh, the first real chapter after the seven-verse prayer. It's labeled number two, but it's understood to be the actual meat of the Qur'an. Where uh, We don't say that Surah Al-Baqarah is the meat of the Qur'an ever. Uh, and mention, as I mentioned, this is not the focus of our refutation, but these are more unbefitting words to talk about the Book of Allah. We know he means here the main subject of the Qur'an or the, 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 uh, lots of basic ideas. 
However, we do not speak about the Book of Allah with words like this and say, Lahm al Quran, the meat of the Quran. And Yusuf Estes needs to repent from every one of these mistakes, not just simply the, the revival of the Aqidah of the Jahmiyyah, but look at these things that he says that the Surah Al Baqarah is the meat of the Quran. It comes in. Now, here it says, I want to mention something. This is a small point, but it's something worth noting. That the word here, that, does not mean this. It means that. If you say this, you say hadha. When you say that, you mean that. So technically, there's already a mistranslation when we say, this is the book wherein there is no doubt, that al kitab Allah Actually, it means the book which is with Allah. There is no doubt in the book that's with Allah. And that makes sense. Both from the standpoint of the Muslim and... Now he says, again, as you have heard, one more explanation that it's easier for us to realize that the Qur'an, the recitation, is with us presently, not in a written format, as much as it is in the hearts and the memories of the people today. Pay attention. No one is twisting his words. No one forced him to say that. In the same program, later, we find more words of deviance from this man. And we're going to be taking from the 11 minute mark and f with 11 minutes and 55 seconds or is this the same series another program in the same series sorry another program from the same series not the same video but another program from the same series meaning the lifting the fog series on huda tv he says and this will be taken from the 1155 point in this one and the link is there in the pdf for those of you who want to look at the video for yourselves. Let's listen to Yusuf Estes. But I'm not done there either. Listen to this. Another amazing thing about the Quran is the recitation itself. Because Quran doesn't mean book. Some of our other programs we discuss this in more detail. Quran actually means that which is being recited. Qara'a. And when somebody is being ordered to recite, the statement in Arabic is Iqra. And one who recites is called a Qari. Quran, the recitation. You see again, the same promotion of the same set of ideas with different words, a different sitting. In another program, on a different channel now, the Islam One channel or One Islam channel, Yusuf Estes makes some more dangerous mistakes along the same lines here. And we will be taking the video, the URL to the video is there. And we're going to listen to the three and a half minute mark from that video. Sorry, a little bit of difficulty here. There we go. Miracles of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The first and foremost miracle which all of us are familiar with is the Quran itself. The word Quran in Arabic does not mean a book. The word in Arabic for book is Kitab. Although we refer to the Kitab of Allah, meaning the Book of Allah, when we speak of Quran, it actually means that which is being recited. You cannot hold Quran in your hand because you can't hold a recitation. This is in your throat, or in your heart, or in your mind. You can hold the book that represents it, but in Arabic that's called Fusha, or the Mus'haf. This is the scripture of Islam. Now you have heard Yusuf Estes with all type of clarity, saying that you cannot hold the Qur'an in your hand because you cannot hold a recitation. This should be very clear about what he intends when he says the Qur'an is not a book. He says here, this is in your throat, or in your heart, or in your mind. You can hold the book that represents it, but in Arabic that's called fushaf, and he corrects that saying, or the mushaf. This is the scripture of Islam. So he clearly makes a distinction between what is written and what is recited. And he says, you cannot hold Qur'an in your hand. 
because you cannot hold a recitation. In another program, on yet another channel, called Share Islam, which was uh, is another channel by Yusuf Estes himself, there's a host named Mutahir Sabri, who asks Yusuf Estes about the source of the Qur'an, the source of the Qur'an. And I'm going to bring his answer here from the 1 minute and 35 second mark of that video. Can you tell us where the Qur'an actually came from? Well, the source of the Qur'an is Allah Himself. This is, the Qur'an of Islam is meaning the speech of Allah. As in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, He's the one who's speaking, and it's His speech and it's His recitation. That's the source, is Allah Himself. And it's not like a, a book. You don't think of Qur'an like a book. We think of it as what's being spoken. There are... Okay, so we hear again Yusuf Estes denying that the Qur'an is a book on this program from the Share Islam channel. Later in the same program, we find Yusuf Estes was asked about how many versions of the Qur'an exist. Now remember, this is Yusuf Estes' program. These are prepared questions that were ready ahead of time, obviously, as his host is reading from a list of questions. And these are the same things that Yusuf Estes says everywhere he goes when he speaks about the Book of Allah. May Allah Ta'ala guide him. So from the uh, from this same video, uh, from the three minute mark approximately, we'll hear the words of Yusuf Estes. And we have to believe that to be Muslims. Just how many versions of the Quran are there? Versions? Yes. <laughs> There's no versions of the Quran. There is the original Quran, and that's it. It is only the recitation if it's exactly as the way it was recited by Allah to the angel Gabriel, and then the angel Gabriel recited it to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And, and it, I know that might, for some people, seem a little strange. They say, "Well, here we are. We hear now that Yusuf Estes believes that Allah Taala recited the Quran to Jibril, and refer to the PDF for." Uh, proper stances on all of these things you will hear here. I need you to be really clear that this audio that you are listening to right now is full of statements of disbelief and misguidance. It is not permissible for you to listen to these statements of Yusuf Estes in this audio without listening to the clarification to understand your religion. Because this Audio that you're listening to right now is very dangerous. It is only to be listened to by those who cannot believe that Yusuf Estes would say such things. We hear that Yusuf Estes has said here that it's only the Quran when it's recited as it was recited by Allah to the angel Gabriel. Moving on to another short 20-minute program. Uh, and I believe this is a radio program designed to introduce Islam to non-Muslims. And there are some people saying these are his words to non-Muslims, so we should not be very critical of them. They were not intended for Muslims. Uh, another attempt to pull the wool over the eyes of the Muslims. You may not speak with words of kufr, disrespect, and dishonor to the book of Allah to the non-Muslims and call that da'wah to the religion of Islam. That is falsehood and in no way an explanation for why Yusuf Estes has made these statements. From the 11 minute and 25 second mark of the program called What's Islam, found directly on one of Yusuf Estes's many websites called whatisislam.com, you will hear the following uh, words. And what does Quran exactly mean in simple English? Well, it doesn't mean book. The word Bible literally means book, biblios, from Greek. But the word Quran is Arabic, and it means recitation, that which is being recited. And that is how the Quran comes to us today. There you have heard more conclusive evidence from Yusuf Estes regarding his beliefs about the Book of Allah. Continuing with the statements of Yusuf Estes on another channel, Dawah TV, 
Yusuf Estes was asked, How do you know for sure that the Qur'an is the word of Allah directly? By a female questioner. Now, I am sorry, but I'm unable to play the audio for you because it has since been removed from YouTube. This is the only one out of this series of videos that has been removed so far, but you can expect that the followers of Yusuf Estes who want to cover his tracks will be removing these videos one by one. This is the first. He said, and I'll quote his words that I have transcribed, first of all, his words, first of all, the Qur'an in this form, in my hand, this is Mus'haf, from the word scripture, Suhuf. But when it's recited, like Sheikh Sudais, when he recited, that's real Qur'an. So don't worry about what is written on the paper. Although we treasure it very much, we honor it and we give it a special place, no doubt, but what's in the heart and in the minds of the people who recite, this is how it is preserved. Intaha kalamuhu, or that is the end of the selected uh, words that are his answer to someone or the introduction to his answer about how do we know that the Quran is really the word of Allah directly. Notice that the questioner was not asking about the Qur'an and the Mus'haf, and is the Mus'haf really the Qur'an? Yet he felt a need to interject, to throw in these ideas without being asked about them. To someone who has a much bigger doubt, how do you know that the Qur'an is the word of Allah? And he's giving them additional doubts and additional uh, misleading teachings, deviance, and so on. Now, we listen to an interview on a Catholic television program where Yusuf Estes, it's an amazing thing that happened. A Catholic man who has a Catholic television program, likely not accepted by most Catholics. He was very happy to present Islam to his viewers. He wanted his viewers to get a real picture of what Islam is from a Muslim preacher. So he opened up the chance for Yusuf Estes to come and present what Islam is. And this Catholic man was very fair in the way he allowed Yusuf Estes to present his views. And he was not into debating or criticizing Islam. In fact, he wanted everyone to understand Islam from Muslim sources. And he did not want to spread misconceptions about Islam. But Qadr Allah wa ma sha'a fa'al, he was led astray by Yusuf Estes. Led further astray by Yusuf Estes. He asked Yusuf Estes to explain what the Qur'an is for the non-Muslim Catholics who don't know anything about it. And the following is his answer. And we will listen to the video. Again, the URL, the link to this video is in the PDF. You need to get the PDF and watch the videos if you want to be absolutely sure to cast aside any doubt. Um, this is from the 10 minute and 40 second mark of that video. And it's called on YouTube, A Catholic TV Interview with Sheikh Yusuf Estes, Part 1, Talking About Allah. The Quran, could you introduce us to what the Quran is for those that of us who only know the Bible? Tell us about the Quran. Well, when you hold it like that and say Quran, it's not really oxymoron, but it doesn't really make sense. I'm going to tell you why. Because... What you have in your hand is a kitab, that's a book, okay? It's not Quran. You can't hold Quran in your hand. Why? Quran means that which is being recited. recited, recited. So it's like holding up a hymnal and saying this is music. No, it's not. It represents music when you put it down and start playing it. But as long as you're holding your hand, it's just a book of paper. As soon as you start singing the song, it becomes music. But when I was in the music business, we'd say, where's your sheet music? It's over there. It's not really sheet music, a sheet of music. That's funny. If, see, do you catch that? Yeah. We've used it so long, nobody could ever separate the word sheet and music and say anything other than, yeah, it's this. Yeah. But in fact, that's the same problem we have when people say this is Quran, and it's not. Because Quran says in it that Allah will preserve it, and nobody can even touch it. It says right in it, nobody can even touch it except the pure, which are the angels. 
And you said, well, you just touched it, and I just touched it. I'm no angel. So how did that happen? Well, because this is not really the Quran itself. It represents something that's with the law. It's his speech. Quran means God's recitation. He recited it. The angel Gabriel heard it, and then he passed it to the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, just as he did with Moses and Abraham and Jesus, peace be upon all of them before. Revelation. So we see here, once more, Yusuf Estes has said the Quran is not a book. And it's an, as he says, it doesn't make any sense to refer to the Quran, to refer to the written book as the Quran. And he says, because what you have in your hand is a kitab. That's a book, okay? It's not Quran. Now you could say, well, he meant the translation. To be fair, the man was holding up, I think, Pickthall or some you know, um, bookstore purchased version of a translation. So you could say, no, Yusuf Estes means it's not a book, meaning the translation is not considered to be to have the ruling of the Quran. And that would be correct. However, he says very clearly, you can't hold Qur'an in your hand. And in light of everything you have heard before, we cannot make this excuse for him, that he meant the translation. Why? He says clearly here in the, in the audio and in the video, review it. Qur'an means that which is being recited. And then he makes the horrible parable. May Allah Ta'ala keep us from hearing this. May Allah Ta'ala protect our ears from hearing this kind of filth. Saying that the Qur'an is like Christian sheet music. The Quran written in the Mus'haf is like Christian sheet music. And he says that the same problem is what we have with people today who say this is Quran, meaning written in a book, and it's not, he says, because Quran says in it that Allah will preserve it and nobody can even touch it. He brings his doubt here that since you can touch the Quran, it must not be, since you can touch the Mus'haf, it must not be the Quran. Since Allah has said that he has preserved or protected the Qur'an, uh, as we will see in our discussion of his arguments, this is absolute falsehood. Nothing ever understood by Ahlul Sunnah in the past ever. Only the beliefs, the exact beliefs of the Jahmiya, the Lavdiya sect of them. In a visit to Australia, Yusuf Estes, addressed a broad audience, including even a Christian debater, with the following words, which are taken from another video available on YouTube called Muslim Christian Dialogue, The Ultimate Truth. And this is part two of three. And this was originally aired on the One Islam channel, and it's available on YouTube with the name I mentioned. We're going to be listening to the selection from 23 minutes and 50 seconds, all the way to 29 minutes. I don't want to digress off my topic. I, there's some stories I usually tell with that, but I won't because of the interest. I want to keep this real short. The last word I want to mention is the word Quran. The word Quran does not mean a book. For Arabic, they have a beautiful word for book. Kitab. The book, the holy book, is called Muktis. This is the holy book. That's the Bible. But when we refer to the Quran, when somebody writes down what Quran means on paper, it's actually called Mus'haf, from the root Suhuf, which means scripture. You can't hold Quran in your hand because it means recitation. It means that which is being recited. Of course, when we write down the sound, we say this is Quran, but what we mean is what's written here represents the Quran, and I think I can explain that another way. When you have a dollar bill, I don't think you have any dollar bills in Australia anymore, do you? Okay, let's, go, let's play high roller. When you have a hundred dollar bill, I feel better now. When you have a hundred dollar bill, 
Do you really have a hundred dollars in your hand? No, you have a piece of paper. But it represents some wealth that's hopefully stored somewhere, right? So like the dollar is the representation of wealth somewhere, Likewise, when you write down Quran, it represents the sound. But not until you hear the sound is it Quran. Usually I have a demonstration, but I'm going to keep it short. Seven verses from Quran, that's it. A'udhu billahi minash rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawmiddin Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'een Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqeem Sirat Al-Ladhina Na'amta Alayhim غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين These are the first seven verses of the Quran. They represent what Muslims do seven times, five times a day. Those seven verses, we recite them throughout our prayers for a total of 17 times every day. That's why I can remember, actually, because you do it that many times every day, you'll know it. The meaning of it to English, it's real hard to get the fullness of the beautiful language of Arabic into the language of English. And I've read many different translations, but I guess the one that's easiest for me, and I hope it'll make sense to you, it says, with the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, all the praise is due only to Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, the ruler on the day of judgment. You only do we worship, you only do we turn to for guidance. Guide us on the straight path, the path of those that have your favor, but not the path of those that have your anger, nor those who are lost. Now, I'm sure you've read other translations of it, and I will tell you, we don't accept any translation of Quran as being Quran because that's just a translation. But we have the original so we don't have to worry about it. The Quran today exists just as it did at the time of Muhammad Sallallahu And when I say that, I'm not saying a piece of paper. Don't think that I said that it was a piece of paper, although there are some very old kitabs or books put around one in Tashkent, Uzbekistan, and one in Top Copy Museum in Islam Abad. No, Islam, what's it called? In Turkey, Islam, Islambul. I pulled a trick on you. It used to be called Islambul. It became Istanbul. When I was in Istanbul, we were up on top of the minaret. And the Turkish brothers were explaining how they used to pronounce it, Islambul, which means very Islam, because that's when Islam moved there in 1453, I think. Anyhow, there's another one in England. But those are not Quran. Those are books which have been written down in what represents Quran, just like what I have over on the desk. But what makes it Quran is when it is heard, memorized, recited, and passed down to the next generation or the next group. And there you have, and I apologize for the lengthy quote there, but there are, you know, statements of support for the Aqidah of the Jahmiyyah here and there in that four-minute passage. I did not want to um, cut them up, lest someone say he's just taking this and skipping what would clarify it. There you have it in the clear words of Yusuf Estes that cannot be explained away. He makes the same tashbih again, saying that Allah, Allah's speech is like paper money. May Allah Ta'ala be exonerated above false claims. And in fact, he is above false claims like this. 
And may Allah Ta'ala correct the tongues of people who speak with this wicked speech. May Allah Ta'ala prevent them from speaking like this. He says that the Quran does not mean a book again. And he calls it, he calls the uh, the Bible the Kitab al-Maqdis, which is just even more, you know, useless, uh, throwing out Arabic words that he has no idea what he's talking about. It's al-Kitab al-Muqaddas, but he's calling it Kitab al-Maqdis. Uh, his Arabic is very poor. He doesn't even understand basic Arabic, yet he uses that limited, his limited beginner lesson, lessons in Arabic to prove the belief that the Qur'an is not what's written on paper. And he says, Mus'haf is from Suhuf and all of that. There you go. You can't hold the Qur'an in your hand. Again, one more time. Because it means recitation. It means that which is being recited. Of course, when we write down the sounds, we say this is Qur'an. But what we mean is what's written here represents the Qur'an. And then he explains it with his dollar bill example. May Allah Ta'ala guide him. These are statements of disbelief from a number of angles, as we will see in our future sittings in this series. In our last audio quote for this, for this uh, sitting, we'll listen to what he says on a radio program called Today Islam, uh, when he uh, speaks to the audience there. And we're going to listen to quite a lengthy passage, but it is uh, a very clear explanation of his beliefs. And on a radio program, it looks like in a masjid, in a new masjid of just some basic American brothers who don't know a lot about Islam, he felt very free to open up and really give it to them. And I'd like you to notice that he in fact faces some opposition with some people who don't, who don't want to say that they understand what he's talking about. People who show him that they are confused by his idea of the Qur'an not being what's written. And I'd like you to note his manners as people all over the world are saying, how can you refute a man with such beautiful manners? I'd like you to look at his true manners. And when dealing with people who do not want to accept his beliefs of kufr, look at the way he treats them very carefully. We're listening from the 23-minute mark about from the, uh, from the uh, selection called What is Quran by Yusuf Estes, available directly from one of his own websites called allahsquran.com. And I'm playing it live right now from his website. Just so you know, all of these things have been played live from YouTube and from the sources I have quoted, not from stored uh, uh, savings or, or, or um, files that I've downloaded. These are live right now from the internet as I speak. Here is the last selection for this sitting, the statement of Yusuf Estes. The Quran is not such that can be altered or played with or changed. And it is mu'ajaza. It's a miracle. It's, it's mu'ajaza, he says. Again, chopping up the Arabic. The existing extant miracle of a law for all the human beings to look at and understand. When you hold it in your hand and it's a book, it's not Quran, it's called what? Kitab. Kitab Allah, the book in your hand. This is representing the Quran, but it is not the Quran. We must give great respect to it and honor to it. We mustn't, you know, uh, let people step on it, things like this. Absolutely, we know that. But at the same time, this is not the Qur'an, because if it were the Qur'an, then this is an amazing statement here, because a person could take that, and I've seen it happen in prisons, for instance, that a non-Muslim guard will come along and he'll take their Qur'ans and he'll rip them up. Or he'll do something bad to it. Or he'll change it. Or he can, one of them put, uh, you know, pig oil, what they call lard, and he put it in there just to uh, insult the Muslim. He did that. Now, can somebody do that to the Qur'an? It's impossible. Allah is protecting the Qur'an. And if you say the Qur'an can't be changed, but you're watching this man change it right there, then you would be confused if you didn't understand this basic point. Qur'an is not this thing in your hand. This represents it. Now I'm going to give you an example just so you understand. Because we've got some youth here that may not catch what I'm talking about. Anybody know what a dollar bill is? Yes. You know what a dollar is, don't you? Is it money? Notice that the people who are disagreeing, or at least looking confused here, they're being dealt with as children now. They're being talked to, they're being talked down to. 
in a very childish manner. Do you know what money is? Yes, you do. Listen to, the st listen to how Yusuf Estes speaks down to the people who are having a hard time understanding his deviance. It's money, isn't it? But what's a hundred dollar bill? It's more money, isn't it? A lot more money. But it's on the same size piece of paper, isn't it? Same amount of ink, isn't it? Why is one worth more than the other? How could it be? How could it be that is there more gold in it or something? No. So that's not really, really the money. What it is, it represents money. Do you understand that now? It means that you can get so much gold for that, or so much silver for it, okay? In theory, you can't really, but you're supposed to. But what I'm saying is that this dollar represents money, but it's really just a piece of paper. So the Qur'an represents the Qur'an, but it's not the actual Qur'an itself. That's what... MashaAllah, we have reached the pinnacle of his tahqiq of his true insight into the aqidah of the Muslims. The statement here should be his banner for his belief system. The Qur'an represents the Qur'an, but it's not the actual Qur'an itself. Again, let it be the banner of Yusuf Estes. The Qur'an represents the Qur'an, but it's not the actual Qur'an itself. These are his words. These are the results of philosophy, the results of excessive kalam, speaking without knowledge, refusing to be guided by the aqidah of the salaf that they had ijma' about. This is the result of rhetoric. This is the result of philosophy. Incomprehensible contradiction. How in the world can a Muslim say the Qur'an represents the Qur'an, but it's not the actual Qur'an? Itself. It's possible to print it and make mistakes in it because it is not the actual Qur'an. Just like if you're printing money, they could make a mistake and put the head upside down or something. It happens. So that's how we understand the Qur'an is something that's a miracle, it's from Allah, it's very special to the Muslims, and it's not like their Bible. They don't have anything that comes close to it. Let's finish it up with this. The Qur'an is Qur'an when it's being recited. So you can hear the Qur'an, but you can't really look at it. Meaning, now I'm not talking about the book, of course, but you can't see the one that was revealed to Muhammad Wasallam, but you can hear it from Muslims. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Tayyib, we have heard the audios that we're going to listen to in this section, and in the PDF file, you will find more proofs from the writings of Yusuf Estes, from his own websites, from some of his... 3,000 websites that he mentions and he brags about when he travels and that he raises money for on a continual basis year-round with all of his trips and all of his speeches. He is a walking fundraiser for this aqidah. In one of those, he mentions uh, did in his question and answers about the Qur'an and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they say, if Muhammad did not write the Qur'an, then who did? He says, no person wrote the Qur'an. It would be illogical that anyone write the Qur'an because the word Qur'an actually means recitation. How do you write sounds, recited words? You actually only write what you hear. People can only write down what they have heard from the Qur'an that Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he says, peace be upon him, which is an illegitimate expression, uh, that does not reach, that does not fulfill the obligation of the Muslim to send salat and salam on the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, another side issue. Therefore, the question is out of order, and he corrects the question, who was the first one who recited the Qur'an? And you can find this passage on his website called the Islam Newsroom, and this screenshot that you'll find in the PDF was taken uh, about a week ago. In another um, selection, the Qur'an by Yusuf Estes from the website called Islam Tomorrow. The screenshot taken last week, you'll find it in the PDF. The word Qur'an, he says, means that which is recited or that which is dictated in memory form. As such, it is not a book. 
nor is it something that reaches us only in written form. The documentation in writing about the Qur'an has been preserved in museums throughout the world, including the Topi Kopi Palace in Istanbul, Turkey, the museum in Tashkent, Uzbekistan, and also in England. Keep in mind also, the Qur'an is only considered Qur'an while it is in the recitation form, not in the written or the book form. The word for what is written and held in the hand to be read by the eye is called Mus'haf, meaning script or that which is written down. Intaha kalamuhu. Those are the ends of his word. The end of his words. That is the end of his words. And we see again further affirmation for this aqidah. You have nowhere to run as a supporter of Yusuf Estes except back to the aqidah of Ahl Sunnah. Ahlan wa sahlan, we welcome you back. This man has been teaching this deviance for the last ten years, as you can see clearly. Do not allow your heart to be blind. Do not turn away from this. This is in front of you, and the issue is serious. The beliefs of Ahl Sunnah versus the beliefs of the Jahmiya. And there are further quotes from different um, written passages written by Yusuf Estes as well in the PDF. I'd like you to uh, review them in the PDF, and you can read in the PDF about the correct responses from Ahl sunnah Ahl sunnah the people of the Aqidah of the Salaf, not the Huda TV stars, not the Huda TV stars, who their priority obviously is to protect the image of Yusuf Estes and to lighten this, this blow and to protect the image of their cooperation with him and their own images as well and the source of their funds and their money. Be aware. Take your deen from the book, the sunnah, the salaf, and the imams of guidance. Don't take your deen from people trying to defend falsehood. Don't take your deen from people with qualifications, but will not speak the truth. Don't take your deen from them. Your deen is more serious, more precious. It's that which is going to lead you to paradise, inshallah, if you take hold of it and practice it properly. Do not give your deen over to fundraisers, to TV stars, to people who defend the aqidah of the Jahmiya and criticize those who want to expose it. Don't take your deen from them. Open your eyes. These beliefs that you have heard are freely propagated by Yusuf Estes. May Allah guide him. On the many TV channels and websites that promote him, there are clear violations of basic Muslim beliefs from the Quran and Sunnah, that were understood unanimously by the righteous early Muslim scholars. One of these mistakes alone, that what is in the Mus'haf is not really the Qur'an, is so grave and so serious that the scholars of Islam consider it something that takes a person outside of Islam. As proven, or as will be proven in the next sitting in this series, insha'Allah ta'ala, and as is proven right now, if you cannot find that, audio or if you if it's not available to you yet in the PDF you find the section called the basic Muslim belief that the Quran is written in Mus'afs from the book the Sunnah the statements of the Sahaba the Imams Ijma total consensus no Sunni ever ever differed with this Aqidah only the Jahmiya Tawa'if al-Mudilla the stray sects that left Islam opposed the Aqidah of Ahl sunnah in this issue. An important note before I close, brothers and sisters, let it be clear, as I've said in the first sitting, and as I will continue to say, we are not declaring, I myself, Musa Richardson, I am not declaring Yusuf Estes to be outside of Islam. That is not my intention here. It is not my scope. I personally hope that Allah will excuse him. I hope. I cannot tell you Allah has excused him. I cannot say he's ignorant and thus he is excused. I will not speak about that. I hope and I pray for Yusuf Estes that Allah Ta'ala excuses him from, the account, from, from truly being accountable for the reality of what he has spoken with due to his ignorance. That's what I hope for. However, I will not lower my voice nor will any Salafi, any Sunni, any follower of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, no one will allow their Aqidah to be played with. No one who takes their deen seriously is going to let Yusuf Estes or any of those people who want to defend him blindly with partisanship, 
blameworthy hezbiya. We will not let you play with our aqidah. We will not let you play with our deen, our paradise, and our hellfire. We will wage war on you until you stop. And until we get rid of these videos, and until we get rid of all of this false speech about Allah Ta'ala, we will continue to wage war on this filthy aqidah and those who support it. Because we're Ahl Sunnah, by Allah's permission and His grace, and we thank Allah Ta'ala for His guidance. And we are thankful to Allah for this guidance. And because we're thankful to Allah, we are going to protect it. We are going to thank Allah by protecting the guidance that He has given us, and by calling to it, and by refuting those who reject it, and those who try to replace it. And those who think they're going to revive the ancient innovations of the Jahmiyyah and give it victory over the Aqidah of Ahl Sunnah. This is our mission. And while those people who defend him, some of them graduates of Medina, some of them graduates on a high level with degrees and PhDs, while those people struggle to find an angle through which to defend this man who has, as mentioned, never had any grounds to speak on behalf of Allah's religion on the level that he speaks. Never. While they scramble and consult each other and try their very best to find some way to A, either defend Yusuf and say his words were misunderstood, B, to attack the critic and those who support this refutation and this clarification, personally, religiously, whatever. I know that there are serious efforts to discredit me and everyone who will hold this aqidah up and push it in the faces of Ahl al-Bid'ah and those who support them. And we're ready for that. And we know that. And this is something we cherish. That we'll stand as men, like our ulama stood up, and نَحْنُ مُتَشَبِّهُونَ بِهِمْ We are people who try our best to resemble the great scholars of Islam. And we love and respect them. And we know that all of the scholars, the messengers themselves, and their best companions, and the best of the imams of the deen, they were slandered. And they were attacked on a personal level. Each and every one of them. Whenever you read about the biography of an imam from Ahl Sunnah, you will read about his personal trials. Because that's what this deen involves. It's a fitna for the people. It's a trial. Allah Ta'ala has created this life as a fitna, as a trial. To see who is going to obey Allah, who is going to hold to his book and to the sunnah of his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who is going to believe as he has been commanded to believe, and who is going to stray upon guidance, who is going to deviate, who is going to oppose his message. That's our life. A graduate from Medina University can't even distinguish between the beliefs of Ahl Sunnah and the Jahmiyyah, and he will aid a man promoting the Jahmiya beliefs over this clarification that you will see is nothing but book sunnah and imams of the salaf and the ijma of the salaf. You have the nerve to refute this? What deen are you on? What religion do you ascribe to? What aqidah do you think you're on? The beliefs of Ahl sunnah need to be purified from the filth of this man, and you open your pathetic mouth and say, I haven't read it, but I advise people not to waste their time by reading this stuff. Taqillah, taqillah, ya akhi, taqillah. A man waging war on our aqidah, a man has made it his mission over the last 10 years to propagate the very foundations of the Jahmiyyah, in lecture after lecture. And he's your co-star on Huda TV. Your allegiance is being tested, O oh, so-called student of knowledge, O oh, so-called sheikh, TV star. Your allegiance is being tested. Allah Ta'ala is looking at you right now. Where will you side? This is a war waged by Yusuf Estes. And Ahl Sunnah will hold to their Aqidah. Ahl Sunnah will clarify and distinguish their Aqidah from the Aqidah of the Jahmiyyah. If you don't want to take it seriously, we have no need for you. 
if you want to follow Yusuf Estes and take this like a big joke, as he has just recently posted on his website, an old article re-featured it and called it Yusuf Estes Exposes Becca. That's not hidden from anyone. That's not hidden from anyone. He has no response. He can have no academic response to this. So he goes on playing games. The man posted an article today on islamnewsroom.com. Perhaps you can still see it. Perhaps he, by now he's hidden it. And I have the screenshots and we'll be posting them. Yusuf Estes exposes Becca. And when you click on it, it's just an article about the historical aspects of Mecca and that from its names is Becca. Do you see that these issues which you have heard on this audio that are dangerous, very serious, obvious, blatant violations of the consensus of Ahlul Sunnah that you will see in the next sitting with all type of clarity, insha'Allah, and you may read them in the PDF file which is freely available from Becca.net backslash en. You're going to allow a man to take these issues and make a big joke out of them? Where is your allegiance? Is your allegiance to the Book of Allah, the Sunnah of the Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the Aqidah of Ahl Sunnah that there's ijma over, that there's no differing about? Or is your allegiance to the TV program, the money in your pocket, the filthy cooperation upon Ithman and Udwan that you involve yourself in, the Hizbiya, the blameworthy partisanship that places the Haq, the truth, the deen of Allah, the correct Aqidah on the back burner for the reputations of the TV stars? Where is your allegiance, O student of knowledge, who doesn't have time to read the clarification but he warns against it. You obviously are upon the same menhaj as, you, as Yusuf Estes, which is the menhaj of kalam bila ilm, the menhaj of speaking without knowledge. How could you advise people with anything regarding something you have not read? Especially when it is as grave as what is contained in that document and essential. And if there's one thing you read this year as a Muslim, why wouldn't it be this? To keep yourself aware of what the correct belief of Islam is. A gathering of proofs and evidences that knocks out one of the most dangerous innovations being propagated today. And you open your pathetic mouth to say, I advise people not to waste their time with it? Wallahi, please, brothers and sisters, if you know the one I'm talking about, advise him to ittaqillah and shut his mouth. Let the aqidah of Ahl sunnah be known. Don't stand up as an enemy to the aqidah of Ahl sunnah Graduate of Medina. Allah Ta'ala guide him. May Allah Ta'ala guide him and silence him until he can speak with the haqq. This is a true test, subhanAllah. This issue that's come up is a true test of people's allegiance. Hizbiyyah, you find so many people accusing good, upright Salafis Followers of the correct aqidah and the manhaj of Ahl sunnah You find so many people in their anonymous cyber kennels, blasting them, accusing them of blind following certain shaykhs, of tahazzub, of hizbiyyah, speaking without knowledge, and so on. This is speaking without knowledge in front of you. Yusuf Estes is the biggest example that we have in the English language of speaking without knowledge. About him, you are silent. About people whose recordings, whose translations, whose efforts have aided the understanding of Islam for the past 10, 15, 20 years, those are the ones you attack. And those are the ones you call hisbis. Those are the ones you say are part of a sect. Ittaqallah. All of you fear Allah. Stand by your brothers in Islam. Cooperate with your brothers in Islam to clean up the mess of Yusuf Estes. And leave your filthy partisanship. Make tawbah to Allah Ta'ala and rectify your situation. As look how your filthy hizbiya leads you into siding with a propagator of the jahmi aqidah. When there are efforts to clarify the distinction between the aqidah of Ahl-Sunnah 
in the Aqidah of the Jahmiyyah. Look at the side you are on. Filthy, disgraceful speech asking people not to read the clarification. I'm not upset because one of my writings is it's being suggested that they don't read it. I'm being I'm extremely upset because the aqidah of Ahl Sunnah is being clarified from the aqidah of Ahl Bid'ah. And someone dares to say don't waste your time reading that. There's no other article to this depth and this detail that people can read on this subject. Think about your speech that you will stand in front of Allah about. Repent from this horrible, horrible speech. You are a person that people are listening to, and this is what you choose to say. Taqillah fi nafsik. Taqillah fi muslimin. Taqillah thumma taqillah. Fear Allah Ta'ala and shut your mouth. You'll find nothing in these refutations other than the aqidah of the salaf. And we need desperately to awaken our brothers who are deceived and victimized by this man of false speech, Yusuf Estes. Muslims should take every bit of care and concern to show the love that is from our deen and convey these messages to their brothers and sisters in Islam so they can worship Allah Ta'ala upon clarity. And they, they can be reminded about blameworthy hizbiyyah. That they can be reminded that our attachments to people, if they are for the sake of Allah, that will be known. If it is for other than the sake of Allah, we have to repent from these attachments. And we have to leave these attachments. These attachments to personalities and TV stars. May Allah Ta'ala bless the Muslims and give them understanding in their religion. It is a must for those of you who have listened to this second sitting, that you listen to the third sitting because there were so many shubuhat, so many doubts and lines of argument from Yusuf Estes in the quotes that you have heard that I fear that you may be affected if you do not listen to the responses from the Imams of Ahl Sunnah regarding those errors which are coming in the next audio or at least refer back to the PDF, the free ebook available at www.bakkah dot net backslash en may Allah Ta'ala give success to those propagating the beliefs of Ahl Sunnah and may Allah Ta'ala cause the efforts of those propagating the beliefs of the Jahmiyyah intentionally or out of ignorance may Allah cause their efforts to fail and not give them any success may Allah Ta'ala guide them wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barik ala nabiyyina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa